44 wins, 14 by coming by way of KO, six losses and six draws. Would you please welcome Freddy Cruz? And his opponent in the blue corner wearing the leopard skin trunks from the Yemen and Sheffield. He is undefeated in 13 professional contests, 11 coming by way of KO. He is the current bantamweight champion of Europe, Prince Nazim Ahmed. At the weigh-in yesterday, Cruz scaled eight stone nine pounds, Ahmed eight stone nine and a half pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a contest of 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. The formalities are over then. Let's join your big fight commentators, Jim Watt, and first of all, say a very good evening to Reggie. Reg Guttridge. Well, there's Larry O'Connor just giving them the final rundown. Now, and this, just to confuse us as always with the scoring, the referee will score if this goes to 12 rounds with the uh, two British judges as well to help him, John Keane and Mickey Van. Carries the title of the WBC International, which means that uh, for those not rated in the top ten, it, it's a bit of a Mickey Mouse championship, but nonetheless, uh, Nassim will, will claim it all right. So now... Let's see if uh, Cruz calling him a, a child. <laughs> yes, he kissed, gave him a peck on the cheek there at the, at the press conference. It really fired up Nassim Hamad. He, he stole his thunder a little bit. But he cut down a lot of the window dressing when he came in the ring. He did vault over the rope, of course, but uh, he left it at that. He's just getting rid of that cultish look now at 20, Hamad. And remember, this fellow's only losses in the last seven years have both been against world champions. Steve Robinson, who's watching at ringside from last in last June, and Wilfredo Vasquez, who's now the, still the WBA champion. That was in '92. It's only a majority decision. In fact, uh, the judges only agreed in that fight on two rounds. So it shows you what kind of fight it was. Not the greatest of punches on the record, Freddie Cruz, but certainly a good workman. He showed that with Robinson in Cardiff. Colourful gloves, haven't seen these for a long time. Yellow ones, it's introducing them now. Oh, what a good shot. To see him shaking in the opening round, that is news. Never been on the deck. His shots are getting right through solidly, Reg. No problem at all from Hamed. He started so confidently and he's shaken up Cruz already twice in the first round. See the way he switched there, Jim. He had a look down at uh, Cruz's feet there to try and detract him. He's looking in the eyes one second and then switched it. He's so unpredictable. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter with just so much confidence in what he's doing. Cruz is in bad trouble here. Jim, this will be sensational if he stops this fellow. Cruz's legs are shaky, Reg. He hasn't shown the effects of the first couple of good attacks. He's had two fights since he fought Robinson, a win and a draw, so he's not exactly on the slide, Freddy Cruz. You can see his eyes, Reg, they're not clear yet. If Hamed keeps this pace going, he could have him over in the first round here. Cruz hasn't recovered from those punches yet. Eight stone, ten division, super bantamweight. Reflexes as far as McGregor was saying, he's really got him. But he's so strong as well, Reg. We have to remember he's come up a weight for this fight, and he looks like the man, he looks like the bully, he's the stronger. This is some start, isn't it? By Nazim, oh, nicknamed Naz locally. Well, it's not bad for a little boy in an opening round, Jim, is it? says, all right, mate, you weren't as bad as I thought you were. I think you wanted to make, make up and be friends again there, Freddie Cruz. Manager Brendan Ingle, of course, in the corner. That's a boxing board inspector on the outside of the ropes. Well, he's, I dare say he was pleased with that, Jim, again. 
Yeah, well, if you wanted a decent start in a fight, Reg, that's the one you would have written down. I mean, that was a perfect start. Right from the off, he backed uh, Cruz up. And he was just totally at the boss. It looked as though it was going to be all over. Cruz, who's normally of a smooth, well-cultured defence, didn't know where to go, didn't know how to cope with these attacks. Look at him, calm as a day at the office, as far as he's concerned. He's, he knocks around the game a lot, goes to gymnasium, goes to other fights, and I've never boxed as a senior amateur at all, but had a very good record as a, a, a junior, seven schools champion of England youth. Hasn't lost, actually, since uh, an amateur in 89. And that was a majority decision. So it's round two, then. And scheduled for 12, but we're judging by the opening round. Well, can Freddy Cruz from the Dominican Republic stay the course or not? I think Cruz has gone into the ring with the wrong idea in his mind, Reg. He's going to have to use this ring, box himself. He, he just wants to keep out of trouble for a round or so, get that head clear, get some confidence back. I mean, that, that must have wiped every bit of confidence he had that first round. Good old campaigner, Freddie Cruz. As you say, it's such a shock to see him under fire so early as that. He's, I don't think he realised what it hit him at a couple of stages there. See, the thing with uh, Hamed, Reyes, nobody else does it the way he does it, so how do, you, how do you prepare for this kind of attack? He's just so strong, so unpredictable. He's got the modest top, the logo on the back of his Mexican <laughs> trunks there, to be king. He doesn't mess about Nassim, does he? He said he wants to be the first Britain to hold four world championships. Different weights, obviously. I mean, Cruz hasn't landed one decent punch yet. Just totally been put on the defensive. The only fancy touch so far from Cruz is the tassels on his trunks. Hamed has just natural power, he doesn't have to set himself, even when he has one foot off the floor, he still has the power to hurt. Strikes from such awkward angles, isn't it? Must be very frustrating to fight against him, mustn't he? I'm not thinking frustrating, Reg, I'm thinking painful at the moment, because yeah, every, well, yeah. every punch he throws has an impact on Cruz. I think he would settle for a bit of, fr bit of frustration if this uh, pain would stop him. I mean, his face yeah. is badly banged up already. <laughs> See, he's reached the stage where Cruz is actually afraid to lead with anything because he knows he's going to be countered. Hamid just so sharp and so strong. Switching stance occasionally just to add to it all. Coming up for round three then. And Nassim Hamid now already stamped his authority in the opening round. He took his time a little bit uh, in the second. I think he's paying some respect surely to uh, Freddie Cruz, who's been around so long at world levels. That really old trooper's pride is in pack a punch at the moment. I mean, Cruz is just going to have to box behind Hamed for, for a round or so just to try and get his wits about him, see if he can solve. Pointless trying to, to lead too often. He can't solve uh, Hamed out. And every time he leads, his heart's not in it and he's been punished by a strong counter. Cruz's losses, Jim, basically were all at the beginning of his career before he'd blossomed into a good pro. See how made switching from orthodox to south, pulling back again. 
spent some years working in the gymnasium, of course. Only his 14th pro fight this now for Hamid. It's the man who's had 56. looking rigid it's going to take somebody a little bit special to beat Hamid somebody who can fathom out his style and dig a bit yeah, it's got to be somebody with enough punching power to trouble him uh, Cruz doesn't have that that's why it was always a safe match no it shoved him over there he's right the referee Jim and neither Larry O'Connell cut that out son I mean Cruz was always a safe chance to take because he total lack of power but nobody believed uh, Hamid would be treating him quite like this. Oh, he just waited for it to move on to that one. Now, that was good timing by Hamid there. Just works his way along the ropes. Waited for Cruz to move to his left and downed him. And Cruz having absolutely no success whatsoever. This must be breaking his heart here. round uh, I should recall that uh, when he was interviewed earlier on then uh, Nassim said well I might stop him in fourth or fifth well, well let's see if he if he fancies himself as a bit of a Muhammad Ali in predicting I'm glad he's cut out a lot of the sort of window dressing in the fight now Jim even coming into the ring he was looking a, just that much more older and matured wasn't he uh, Nassim yeah, I thought it looked a little bit keyed up at the start of the fight, uh, almost approaching pre-fight nerves. But uh, right from the first bell, not, uh, I lost that idea. The only way, on, only way to score that, Reggie Cruz hasn't landed one decent punch on uh, Hamed yet. No, and they give him the full point scoring there, the British judges and referee. Well, Alan, just as I've said that, he's landed a decent little left hook. I wonder if that'll just anger Hamed. Unofficial score there by Barry McGuigan, which we do on ITV. But I'm sure the judges have got that the same way. Well, Cruz has got through a couple of times here. Uh, Hamed's come back with better, but at least he's landed a couple of shots. Oh dear, there we go again. Two falls and a submission. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, we got. <laughs> That's one time he might deserve a bit of applause to do it in the middle of a fight like that, gentlemen. He's, he's got more front than Blackpool. Definitely a unique talent, this little fellow. Well, Cruz landed a couple of decent shots. We'll see if it's done anything for his confidence. I wouldn't expect it has. Now he, he's well fired up for this one. The worst thing that Cruz, Cruz's manager could have done there was play games with him in a press conference and call him, I've come only to fight a child. What have they done to me? Hamed's dropped down a gear again, just keeping himself in control, actually enjoying himself now. He's a bit exciting when he unloads properly, but he's, he starts to do a bit of posing between those little burst of punches. I would actually like to see Hamed uh, launch an attack and sustain it. Yeah, I would too, Jim. That's what he's got to do in world class now. Well, Reggie isn't world class. I mean, this fellow a few months ago was challenging for the world championship. We've got to see he is in world class now. Yeah, that, that's what I meant, actually, that he's now in world class and he's got to do it. Oh, look at that. He can lead with an uppercut. I mean, not many instructors advise that from the Southpaw stance.
it's round five now. And if you've joined us late, Nassim Hamed, need I say the man in the in the leopard trunks who switches style, the European Super Bantamweight champion. That's the eight zone ten against Freddy Cruz from the Dominican Republic, the man who gave Steve Cruz a, a decent fight anyway for the uh, World Championship last June. And uh, well. Really, you can count on one hand the decent punches that Cruz has been able to get through in this first five rounds of a scheduled 12 for the WBC Quotes International and Quotes Championship, which is vacant at the moment. I think Cruz realises now, Reg, he doesn't have the power to trouble this young fella, so what else is he going to do? He can't land punches enough to outpoint him, so he's just going to try and hang in there as long as he can, put up some sort of show. But uh, it must be breaking his heart, he's had no success whatsoever. in the crowd already Jim not bad for a lad they're shouting out in here in Sheffield I mean he really is doing a quiet number on him isn't he as he wants here Ahmed you you wouldn't think this is the same guy that had fought Robinson and Wilfredo Vasquez a WBA champion and that, that, that one was a photo finish as well all right he's he's aged a bit since then but it's it's all about style and and power and the difficulty in trying to hit this fellow, Hamed. Well, Hamed has said he wants to move up through the weights and win world titles at, at different weights. Well, he has that natural strength and power. And I mean, you, you could see him go actually going up as far as lightweight. And just a, a style that nobody's ever seen before. We always think we've seen it all in this business, but this is a new one, Jim, isn't it? You can't just, you couldn't imagine any comparison with anybody in style. And, and he's not any fancy Dan, he can fight, he has na natural power. And when he whips those punches in, they're vicious shots. He doesn't always sustain the punches, it's no way he's quite happy to let fights go for a couple of rounds. Another good round there for Nassim Hamid, and here's Gary Newbon talking to world champion Steve Robinson. Steve, Hamid is making a big thing about he wants to fight you for your WBO featherweight title. You're here in force with all your camp. Do you really fancy it after what you've seen? Well, he's looking very impressive. Um, if he wants to fight me, it's up to the promoter and the manager, you know? He's very strong, isn't he? Oh, he's very strong, very good puncher, very loose, uh, awkward fighter. But with uh, Nassim, you've got to really press him, you know, and push him back. Well, Cruz isn't doing that, but Cruz has never been stopped. And do you get the feeling that this fight is definitely not going to go the distance? It don't look like at the moment, because uh, Freddy Cruz don't seem to be working, you know. He seems to uh, lost his confidence since he fought me, and um, he should be getting his jab working. What impresses you most about Hamid? Nassim Hamid? Yeah, he's very hard puncher, very loose, very awkward fighter. Well, he's got that right, Steve Robinson. Uh, Summed that up pretty well, Jim, didn't he? Yep. Sixth round. Well, he's, he's got to lay just a bit more leather on him now, Ahmed, and he's got to start unloading if he wants to be the very first to stop Cruz, which within the boxing trade they know is a good performance. I was always amazed how easily he won the European title against Neville Castro. I mean, we really thought that would be a tough little fight for him, but I mean, he did, did exactly as he pleased. And he's actually having an easier time, if you like, with Cruz here. Yeah, he's just allowing to take place what he wants to take place. Everything is under his control here. Oh, 
He, wor he worked that punch early on. Right through the middle of that uh, protected guard he fought there for us. He's banging trouble here. He's going to do well to, to get over the round, I think. His legs are going a bit. Looks like it's all over here, Reg. He's got time to do it too, Hamid. In the sixth round, see, now he's unloading. That's, that's good stuff. This is a brave fellow, Jimmy. He wants to go out with his pride, if nothing else. Yeah, that leading punch was a finish of itself, Reg. I mean, Hamid actually seems to have the ability to change the direction of a punch after he starts to throw it. That looked as though it was coming out as a jab, and he just switched it into an uppercut, bang on the chin. I've never seen that done before. His head almost departed from his shoulders the way he brought that up. This is one game fellow crew, and I'll tell you what, he's got to be, because it's all over. Referee's quite right, he's, he's seen the man wobble, he knows he's banging trouble. Hamed's fault, I must say, brilliantly in that round, the way he unloaded the punches, we've been waiting for him to do that, and when he did, he did it with style, and certainly a great deal of power. The very first man then to stop 55 fight, 57th fight this world for Freddie Cruz. I doubt if he protests, because uh, I think Larry O'Connell, the referee, well, did him a favour there, because he, he'd taken enough stick. So he's now got another little championship to add to his European here, the WBC International. Fourteenth win on the turn, twelfth, twelfth stoppage now. Let's have a look at it again. This is where it all started, Jim. Yeah, well, that, it's as though he set off to throw a jab and then switched into an uppercut. Well, there he goes, dips, bang, that was a beautiful punch. That was a finisher in its own right, that punch. Cruz did well to, to recover from that. And it's nice to see some uh, class refereeing. Cruz had nothing left here. Hamed was doing as he pleased, as he was from the first bell. And the time was right, had one around, had hardly landed a punch. Referee Larry O'Connell picked the perfect time to call it over. And that was a tremendous performance. That's his second title in the second weight division. We're not winning world titles yet, Reg, but uh, it's well within his grasp to pick up a couple of world titles if he boxes like this. Well, anyway, he's entitled to permit himself a bit more than the style is, smile, isn't he? Though I don't blame him, uh, Hamid. That's I've been critical of him in the past when I thought his showboating was a bit over the top, but that was uh, a real good performance. <laughs> Three seconds of round six. The referee has stopped the contest. Cruz being in no position to defend himself. The winner and new WBC international super bantamweight champion, Prince Nazim Ahmed. So Nazim, the champ, and we'll go to a quick break. Welcome back. Here's the winner, Nazim Hamed. Another excellent performance. You're really sharp tonight. And that is the first time, of course, that Freddy Cruz has ever been stopped in his 57th fight. Well, you've seen it for yourself, Gary. The punching power's there, the speed, the accuracy. He called me a child. I showed him I'm a man tonight, and he's going home knowing that I'm going to become a king. Well, it was an excellent performance. Now, just before we talk to Steve Robinson, let's have a look at the finish, Naz. This was a terrific uppercut coming up here. Yeah, a right uppercut coming up. I just went to line it up. Boom, there it is. And then come back with a left hook, and it's there. Well, it didn't connect properly, but you've seen it for yourself. The right uppercut, what done the damage. That's what started him off. Uh, here it comes here. Line it up. Boom. Oh, that was a, a pearl. What do you reckon, Steve? Good shot. Good shot. Nice one. I'll tell you what, Steve. Let's bring in Steve Robinson. Um, huh? Now, Nazim wants to fight you, but that fight presumably is some way off yet, isn't it? Well bit of time really um I think he's more of a natural bantamweight really I think he's gonna find a hard fighting me fair weight like you know a natural fair weight well believe it or not uh, Steve I'm fighting super middleweights cruiserweights so stepping up to featherweight to me is just gonna be a dream come true and when when I do get to featherweight and we do meet there's definitely the champion standing right here my brother why do you particularly, you've got so many weights to choose from, why do you particularly want to fight Steve Robinson, who doesn't actually well, need you? I've got to give it Steve, I can't knock Steve Robinson. He's done the business for, through all the British fighters. He's uh, held his title, defended it more than four times. He's done the business. I want, to come, I want to come and show the public that I'm the best. 
I'm the best in Britain in the featherweights. I'm the best in the super bantams. I'm the best in the bantams. I'm going to be the best in the world. And you're only 20. I'm 20. What can I say? That's a wicked tie you got on there, my brother. It's a cheap and nasty tie, actually, but it was given to me by Brendan Ingle. It's one of the Flintstones. We're all joining your fan club. I don't think Jim Rosenthal would fancy a tie like that, though. <laughs> He's absolutely right about that.